Hello and welcome to Undercover History, a show in which I hope to explore some of the most interesting and often forgotten aspects of history. Today, we will be diving into the history of one of ancient China's most interesting dynasties, the Xin Dynasty. When thinking about Chinese communism, most will conjure up images of Mao, the Great Leap Forward, and the Cultural Revolution. But what if I told you that China's first communists may not have been Mao, but instead was a relatively unheard of emperor by the name of Wang Mang, the sole ruler of the short-lived Xin Dynasty which ruled China 2,000 years before Mao. Our story begins in the Western Han period, the first half of the famous Han Dynasty. The Western Han, with the capital in Chang'an, modern-day Xi'an, was one of the most successful periods in Chinese history. The Han heartland was greatly expanded southwards and northwards as the Xiongnu barbarians were expelled. It was towards the end of this illustrious era that our main character, Wang Mang, is born. Wang Mang was born to a clan of great importance and prominence in the Chinese imperial structure. His aunt was even the first empress to Emperor Yuan of the Han. While he enjoyed privileged status, he did not have the titles and power many of his family members had. Despite this, he was able to overcome by studying hard and became well known in his early life as a Confucian scholar. He was very well liked by everyone he met and made many powerful friends in the administration. In fact, he was so charismatic that some of his more powerful friends officially lobbied the emperor for him to receive the title of Marquis, which is akin to the title of Duke or Count. This effort proved successful, and Wang Mang became the Marquess of Shindu. His good reputation allowed him to climb even higher up the ranks of the Han Empire. Emperor Cheng, the third to last Han Emperor, made Wang Mang the commander of the armed forces, the highest title available to an administrator in the Han Dynasty. However, when Emperor Cheng died, things seemed to take a turn for the worse. The new emperor, Emperor Ai, attempted to destroy the Wang clan, replacing them in his court with factions more loyal to himself. His aunt lost the title of Empress Dowager, and the Wangs lost much of the power they once had in the Han court. Luckily for the Wang family, however, Emperor Ai would only reign for six years. He also left the throne childless, as he was gay, and this time, Wang Mang's aunt, Empress Dowager Wang, would not be screwed over again. It did not hurt that Emperor Ai had become a deeply unpopular emperor, and his schemes at court only served to further worsen his reputation among the Han administration. Empress Wang quickly seized control of the throne, installing the young child Emperor Peng, and placing Wang Mang as the regent to the young emperor. Wang Meng, who at this point was a very popular and famous person in the Han government, began immediately purging any political rivals, exiling them and stripping them of their titles. He also began to spread conspiracy theories and propaganda, claiming to be the reincarnated Duke of Zhou, a legendary duke who ruled over the Zhou dynasty centuries before. His propaganda campaign worked, and with the young Han emperor Powerless to stop Wang Meng, he overthrew the Han Dynasty, and in 9 AD, he proclaimed himself Emperor of the Xin, or in Chinese, New Dynasty. While Wang Meng's rise to power from a humble administrator to the Emperor of a New Dynasty is interesting in itself, Wang Meng's short rule would become one of the most peculiar eras in Chinese history. This is because the moment Wang Meng became Emperor, he immediately introduced a series of highly controversial economic reforms. His most important policy, and also the most disastrous, was the abolition of the old Han gold and bronze currency. He replaced this with 37 kinds of coins, made from bronze, copper, shells, and more. A lot of the time, the money the coin was worth was hundreds of times higher than the cost to reproduce the coin itself. As a result, Fraud skyrocketed, and much of the new coinage became unusable due to fakes. Over the course of a 16-year reign, he passed four more major monetary reforms, making the Xin dynasty extremely unstable and very susceptible to corruption. In order to self-correct for his mistakes, and to balance the government's budget, Wang Mang instituted national monopolies on weapons, liquor, salt, iron, forestry, and fishing. This direct government control over key industries is very reminiscent of communism. 
His next disastrous policy came when he nationalized all land inside of the empire, ending private ownership and property, just like Mao did 2,000 years later. All of those who owned a lot of land were forced to give it to some other poorer neighbors. He confiscated all farms larger than 100 acres, giving it away to poor peasants. This way, the land inside of the empire was divided up more fairly. Critics of the system would be exiled and persecuted. He imposed high taxes on slave owners, and then later banning slavery entirely. However, his controversial and sometimes insane policies didn't end there. His next policy was the tax on laziness, called the sloth tax. It was for those who were not actively working to produce taxable revenue. This way, Wang Mang thought, he could ensure that everyone was earning money so that he could tax them. Wang Mang's reforms were deeply unpopular with the people of his empire, but they were not yet enough to shake him from power. In the meantime, he focused on dealing with foreign enemies of his new empire. His crazy policies and weak legitimacy made him a target for the Korean tribes, the southern Vietnamese, and pretty much every nation bordering the Xin dynasty. The Xiong Nu, sensing weakness, had returned from the northwest and begun attacking northern China once again. Wang Meng sent hundreds of thousands of men to deal with these enemies, but was not successful. In fact, he had to spend so much of his time dealing with his foreign enemies that he had no time to fill local administrative positions, and therefore corruption skyrocketed inside the new empire. However, the worst was yet to come for the fledgling dynasty. The main artery of Chinese civilization at the time was the Yellow River, which in the year 11 overflowed. Later changes in the courses of the Yellow River in the following years brought floods, drought, and famine to the Xin Empire. These events caused the peasantry to believe that the emperor had lost favor with the heavens, thus causing him to lose the so-called Mandate of Heaven. The loss of the Mandate of Heaven has been the principal reason behind many dynastic changes and major rebellions all throughout Chinese civilization, and this time was no different. To the average Chinese peasant, the changes in the Yellow River were a sign that the heavens were displeased with Wang Mang's radical economic changes, and thus a sign that the peasants needed to revolt, to restore heavenly order. The shifts in the Yellow River's course was a straw that broke the camel's back, thus setting off the powder keg of discontent which had developed under Wang Mang's new policies, beginning one of the most devastating periods of rebellion in Chinese history. By the year 22, much of China had been occupied by dozens of peasant and agrarian revolts. Most prominent among them were the Lu Lin rebels and the Qi Mei, or Red Eyebrows. Some estimate that these rebellions killed 25 million, or half of the Xin Empire, by the time the rebellion was over. Armies in the hundreds of thousands of peasants swarmed across the countryside, capturing town after town. Meanwhile, Wang Mang's armies were still on the fringes of the empire, dealing with foreign enemies. While Wang Mang sent troops to try and stop the Red Eyebrows, they were defeated handily and pushed out of eastern China entirely. In the meantime, the Luolin rebels had split into two, one marching onto Chang'an and another onto the secondary capital of Luoyang. In further bad news for Wang Mang, the descendants of the very powerful Han royal family had come back from exile and joined forces with the Luolin rebels. Suddenly, the Luolin rebels had become the new face of the very popular Han dynasty, and they quickly became a legitimate threat to the Xin dynasty. Finally, after months of relative inaction, Wang Mang sent his best general and 430,000 troops to attack the Luolin rebels at the city of Kunyang. But, according to ancient Chinese sources, the 10,000 Luolin rebels inside the city managed to break the siege and rout the entire Xin army. While the numbers involved in the battle are most likely exaggerated, it seems clear that the Luitland rebels had won a decisive victory over the Xin army. Following this devastating defeat, it was clear to everyone that the Xin empire was on its last legs. The Luitland rebels entered Chang'an on October 7, 23 AD, with Wang Meng dying soon after outside the city. Still to this day, many scholars debate whether Wang Mang's reforms and reign are really indicative of socialism and communism, or whether his reforms were really motivated by Confucianism and a desire to go back to the Zhou dynasty. Wang Mang's land reforms, for instance, were designed to emulate Zhou-era land divisions. His currency reforms as well, 
were designed to move back to the coinage that the Zhou dynasty used. He also claimed that he was the second coming of the Duke of Zhou. This return to the way the previous dynasties did things was very indicative of Confucian thinking. Nevertheless, his strange policies have left many historians speculating that he was a communist, a social reformer way ahead of his time, perhaps even a time traveler. Regardless of his motives, it is clear that the short-lived Xin dynasty and its sole ruler, Wang Mang, have become one of the most fascinating eras in Chinese history. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Stay tuned for more history videos that stray outside of what is common knowledge.